Festival, and we are with two of the creators and promoters of Back to the Land. So um, we've got Matt and Gabby, and I'll let them introduce themselves a little bit, and then we'll just kind of roll into a few questions. Okay, so Matt, you want to start? Yep, so I'm Matt, and this is Gabby. Um, we started Back to the Land two years ago. This is year two. It was very much started on a whim last year. Um, we were really getting into the homesteading life ourselves and the farming life. We uh, had started a couple years prior to that. Um, just starting like a lot of people start, gardening on a really small property. Um, and then just as many people, ha it happens to many people, you just kind of start getting obsessed and, and you start getting rewards when you have successes and you're just like, okay, got my vegetables, now it's time for chickens, oh, now I need goats. So we just kept getting more immersed. But as we were learning, we really were realizing that the changes in our life that were happening to our health and our finances um, and, and spiritually, just the way we were living, our relationship, we, we realized that those problems that we had previously, that, that we were removing those problems, were echoed throughout our community and echoed really throughout the world. And we realized that we're like we need to start pushing these changes to the rest of the world, really evangelizing the homestead lifestyle. Um, at the time, we had started a YouTube channel, and so we were like kind of using that as a mechanism to start teaching as we learned, you know, not considering ourselves that much of experts at the time. And we had met uh, Billy from Permapastures Farm, and he has a YouTube channel called uh, Permapastures as well. And in a conversation, we were all talking about this idea of gathering. Um, at the time, everything had been shut down or locked down or, or whatever during you want to call it yeah. Yeah. during the. Uh, what they call the pan <laughs> pandemic. Yeah. And so we got the idea of like, well, they're trying to keep people from gathering and that's really what we need now the most is to gather together Absolutely. and come up with nutritive solutions and to start improving immune systems and everything. Um, hopefully we can say the word immune system on YouTube. Yeah. And so um, we it just started out as a, a idea and then three words, which is back to the land. We were talking about the back to the land movement in the 70s where all these hippies in San Francisco and everything kind of had the, the idea of we really need to get back to nature and start living natural healthy lives and growing food again and so we said like let's try to echo that that idea um, so we threw together the festival last year um, and then this year we had so many more people jump in Daniel Amick who owns this farm and his wife Alicia um, all of them jumped in together um, what do you think what do you think your biggest challenge was last year last year was all of it, not, we did not know how to, we had, had no we had idea how to run a festival. Run a festival. <laughs> Festivals are all logistics yes. yeah. um, and all personalities and, and um, had no idea what we were and doing. And also just like not really knowing what people wanted per yeah. se, like that, because there are some homesteading conferences out there, so there's a model for it somewhat, yeah. but it's also still kind of wide open. So. Well, and we're going to address that a little bit in, a, in <laughs> yeah. another question too. But but, but that's good. So it, it just the whole logistics of, like you said, bringing people and things and, yes. and the idea out to everybody to say, hey, come on. So what do you think your response was last year? It was overwhelmingly good. It was way we more plenty, than we thought. Plenty of like, you know, things that we need. There were many people who were, and every single person was very gracious about when they had a fix. They would bring it like, hey, we need to fix, solve this problem or solve this problem. And that's happened again this year too. Nobody came at us in a, in a negative manner. It was all very constructive. Um, so there was plenty of that and plenty of feedback, but the response was very good. People really loved it. And like, and like we had we had people, you know, what, one of the big features, and thanks to Permapasture's farm uh, of last year, was doing the pig butchery yes. class. And yeah. we just had, you know, so many people come up to us afterwards, you know, months after, and say, we got a pig and butchered it ourselves mm -hmm. as a family or, or whatever, just from, from doing this class and being introduced to it. And so it's like, we wanted to facilitate. Yeah. But that's the home run, like right? That. That's the, mm -hmm. the conference is about learning those things and piquing yes. that Getting interest in yeah and actually tackling that to thing that was just a thought step. in their mind yeah. that they never really were going to tackle right yeah. well and we saw it last year because we we came last year and we loved it for a lot of reasons um we love billy and william and michelle and what they do uh the foraging walk was mm -hmm. awesome i think everybody liked that and i heard a lot of echoing comments about that um more vendors this year than mm -hmm. last year um uh, and a greater variety I, I would also uh, ask last year, because there were some kids there, but I think we had a lot more kids this year. So was that a thought process? Are we going to have something for the kids or, you know? Yeah, so we uh, this was our first year actually experimenting with some kind of kids activities. Yeah. Um, we brought uh, Aaliyah Downey in. Uh, she's a Montessori teacher and really cool person because over in Nashville, she started at, this, at the Montessori school. She started a farm at the school and, and for the kids. 
um, without a lot of resources either. She just kind of figured it out, mm -hmm. figured out the funding, just kind of scrapped everything together. Mm -hmm. And so she did some kids activities, but also she was also talking to parents about how to make this happen at other schools. Um, we had Alicia throw together kind of a nature treasure hunt for the kids. <laughs> but more and more, we want to go much further down that rabbit hole because that is the who's future. going to be, that is the future. And this is, that's who this is all for in the end. Like, yes, so we're seeing the changes in our health, but like for our family and our children, the most important thing is that from day one, they're eating real food, they're learning to grow real food, they're living a life close to nature. Yes, and and well, last year we interviewed William from Permit Pastures Farm. One of my things is like we're mid fifties, and we we kicked this off a year ago, right? So, and we know that farmers in general, the average age is sixty two to sixty eight, right? So. I try to talk to as many younger farmers um, from as many different backgrounds or varieties to see like what are you doing, what are you seeing out there. So, being the second year, and and being in your age group, do you see more twenty and thirty somethings this year than you saw last year, or two years ago, or I don't know if it's more, but like it's many, it's so many. Um, we yeah. there are what's really cool is like we have had people here who are just our neighbors who are about our age and they we met them just from living in close proximity and they were already going down this trail right um, so I think there's absolutely movement I think a lot of the young people and even Millennials who get a bad rap for, for often justifiable reasons <laughs> a lot of them are also attuned enough and, and you know so much in kind of social media and YouTube that they maybe have a better picture of the world than a lot of baby boomers or other people do. Right. So a lot of them I think are just responding logically and saying, oh, homesteading is the the only, the only way. way. Yeah. And also economically, a lot of us are realizing this is the only way I'm gonna be able to have a family. Right. Like you can look at, oh, just one hour away is from that, here in Nashville, yeah. we could never afford a house. Out here we could afford the land and there wasn't it wasn't quite as tyrannical so we could actually build a house. Yeah. You know, I'm come, I'm from Oregon originally. I could never pursue my dream there. I could never build a house. But here in this rural area, I can get the land, we could build a house on our budget, and then we can sub subsidize so that by keeping our costs of eating and everything else low by farming. Yeah, and there's such such a much less of a barrier to entry to actually create things too like we could create this festival here i yes. don't think if we could have we couldn't have done that no. in nashville there we would be so much regulation there would be so much like our food vendors would, would have had to have special permits and everything like here you can actually and like the, the logistics of a festival are so overwhelming already yeah. or, or a business or a starting farm or anything so when all those barriers are removed in a place like this i think yeah. for a lot of younger people homesteading in this lifestyle is like the only option for living a healthy self-sufficient financially self-sufficient life mm -hmm. so so was this coming here year two was this a natural stepping stone to come on a farm was it a thought process or was it just another it, it would be better than it was where both. we did it yeah it was both and it was a blessing it was just everything lined up um the amix we had yeah. not met them the first year of the festival i think i had known him a little bit from facebook um, but, he came, I think the first time we met him was when he came the to the best yeah. 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 Um, and, and, and they played music with you. Played yes, music exactly. with you. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. um, they and, know each other from being yeah, musicians. Just from being, yeah. yeah, we're both musicians. And so we definitely wanted to have, we had a cool location last year. It was a campground. It was beautiful. But, like, why not showcase something? And it just so happens that right here in the same county, the Amex have been building this for many years. And so they're a little bit ahead of a lot of people's schedules. So they can actually showcase regenerative grazing. A, a small scale dairy operation, um, the, the tree planting, silvo pasture, everything is like, this place is a museum of, <laughs> a museum, and it's a working, quickly growing museum of regenerative agriculture. Well, and it shows them because they can see and do things that you couldn't do at Nakoma, right? Yes. And, and so while that was a great venue, it was an awesome venue, um, seeing that regenerative and, and those things and, and the fact that he's got a sawmill, which yes. is awesome. Um, and we're going to interview both of them later because they're just great people. Yeah. yeah. And speaking to your point earlier about like younger generations, I mean, they're around our age and they were, when we first came to their farm, like they were just such an inspiration to us too, you know, seeing all the things that they've, that and they've children done in the and business. they have children and, and, and it's just really cool to see to see that dynamic and, and how it works and, well, it's, and that's a the, it's a real model. And that's I think the thing too is as you, as you get into this and, and that, that comfortability you just talked about, even though there are 200 plus people here this year, right, a um, little, little bit bigger than last year, I, don't, I didn't feel uncomfortable here. I mean, I, yeah. I was talking to complete strangers all mm -hmm. the time um, and felt comfortable and, and like-minded is one thing, but you know that 
while not everybody that's a homesteader thinks exactly alike. None of us think good. exactly alike. Yeah, but I mean, you can say that for the most part, 75 or 80 percent of some of the things that we like and do and, and gear towards are that way. But you're not afraid to say so here. You're not afraid to share your ideas, whatever yes. they are, because yeah. that's really what I think that, that people should draw away from this is it's about coming together. Mm -hmm. And being on Daniel and Alicia's farm lets us see what they're doing and where they're going, right? Because a lot of times us, we've just been doing it a year, right? You want to do everything. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you get that win when yep. you grow those vegetables and that feeling you get, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so year one was good. Year two has been fantastic. Mm -hmm. What does year three look like? Year three, um, so this year we've learned a lot of specific little things that you know can be yeah, improved. We're learning, like, little a lot details. of logistics and stuff like that. Um, but I think we'll probably shoot for some more growth. Uh, we do like keeping it at the festival at a bit of a cap. So yes. we, you know, we don't want ten thousand people. We don't. We're, most homes there to share this uh, the the introversion disease. <laughs> it's not really a disease, but you know, we we don't like big crowds. Yes. So staying and close like to the Dunbar number the is kind of nice. Yeah. Well, and and I think too, because we've been to bigger events and we've been to some that really struggled to keep it under three hundred and fifty or four hundred. Mm -hmm. And when you get too big, you don't get that intimacy or that one-on-one yes. -on -one and that connection. Or being able to talk to people about what they're doing yeah. and you're right. learning from them as well. Yeah. So you guys are basically bringing in people, not just speakers, but you're bringing in people with their own personal uh, struggles and yeah. Yeah. successes exactly. that yeah. they can share we can share with each other. That was a huge, so, a huge thing for us, even for like who we chose to be speakers this year. You know, since we had the first year under our belt, we kind of could choose any, you know, anyone we kind of wanted this year. And we really, you know, it's really tempting to want to shoot for the stars and get the, right. the biggest YouTube, people with the biggest YouTube following. Um, but we, we noticed there were so many people just locally mm -hmm. that, you know, even that we right met through doing homestead yeah. design or who were right in our county who, and just quietly being masters quietly of their trade. Do, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So I well, think and, and why not expose them, right? Yeah. Why not give them the plug? Like from the vendors you choose to the speakers you mm -hmm. choose. And and you can see it even in the attendees, right? Some people have much bigger farms and have much bigger things. And we've seen that other we went to events where people had thousands of acres. Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing at a homestead mm -hmm. event, right? <laughs> um, but wanting they're wanting to downscale to it. So I, I think that, yeah, that community that you're building and, and drawing from that community is a plus. But, I mean, there were people from Iowa yeah. and Maryland. And, I mean, we came from central Kentucky. Um, so, it, yeah, it's beautiful. I think it's nice that you guys are actually showcasing people that aren't showocased by your typical homestead mm -hmm. yeah. shows. That was Star, really important Stargazers. Yes. Yeah. And also I, the local part was important to us because we also, like, even though this isn't just a local event, you know, people like to say people from here, Kansas, Coming Iowa, in. everywhere. But we also want to, sh we we want this to, to show replicable models for local areas. And right. So we want to show yeah. like, look what's already in this random rural community in Tennessee yeah. of, of Hickman County. Mm -hmm. There's already so much infrastructure and all the people we need for a network. It's just really people need to start connecting all that. And understanding, whether, right? Yes, whether that's a festival or just getting a plant swap together or yeah. online yeah. groups or anything to start connecting it because we found like world-class speakers who just happen to live here yeah, yeah. In, yeah. A, in a very rural county well and yeah. super cool things like justin metcalf who yeah. brought his mm -hmm. grain mill mm -hmm. and you can gr grind everything from what you're going to use in the house to make bread with to what you feed your animals yeah. with right this is metcalf mills that is justin metcalf over there he made this mill and basically you can mill all of your home grains whatever you want to do flour whatever you can change the stone so it's got two stones he's down there working that stone putting edge on it um, that mill has two stones in it and there is a rod right there that controls it and moves the stones closer together or farther apart depending if you want it to be hold or how far you want the grain to be cut down and this is Justin Metcalf's information right here. He's in North Carolina, Asheville, I believe. So this is the other side, so that you can see he's got that belt running in there. Right, it's turning. Again, he hooked it up to his truck. He's got the exhaust, so this is going up and away from where he's working. 
belt is turning away right there. And it is kicking us out some ground up material. That's cornmeal. That's good cornbread right there. Yeah, yeah. I was, that's what I was saying. I was saying he can set it so it can be ground for whatever you want, right? Yeah, Whether you want to do it in the house mm -hmm. or you want to feed for your animals. Mm -hmm. It's got a couple of stones in there like that. And uh, that, that thing on the other side just mm -hmm. spreads them out or puts it closer together. Mobile milling. There you go. And why can't every county have one of those instead exactly. of having to go to, to so one of the things that we love and one of the things that we volunteered this year and one of the things that we wanted no discount for is the fact that you guys don't break the back of homesteaders mm -hmm. right you make it affordable for people to come here that's and one I, of our top priorities and, and i was going to say i mean while it can be you know kind of yeah we need a little bit more money or yeah it would be nice too right yeah what is that part of like like your model is yes that, yeah, that you, and you grew up in a big yeah family i grew up like and, in a big family and very low income like we were never above the federal federal i may still have never been above the federal poverty line but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but like you know a lot of events were inaccessible to us and a lot of homesteading festivals are inaccessible pe people especially with families that was a big deal was us getting yes. the price of the ticket down as low as we could for the children too because you know, a lot of times people are like, well, I guess we'll just have to leave the kids at home and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. go attend ourselves or just have one spouse. One We've done yeah. that. And yeah, the families are integral to this because, like, we're not just trying to start one generation right. of, of yeah. homesteading and farming. Like, we're trying to make this a lifestyle that will go across America and across the world again. And, yeah, and bringing in, affordably bringing in other generations is key. Yeah, yeah. I think other, uh, I think my thing, I really want to say thank you because um, there I, I think that other venues will, um, uh, what do you call it, charge so much that mm -hmm. they're having to choose between having to feed their animals yeah. or go to the event, and they will always go with feeding the animals, obviously, yeah. right? So I think it's really great. Plus, you know, I think here there's, like we said before, the intimacy, and you're actually, I think you're learning more. I've been to those other ones. Yeah, you don't need the Disneyland effect. No, yes. we don't. Yeah. Yes. we. Yeah, the Disneyland and the going crazy over the YouTubers and everything. That's not, I mean, it's nice to see those people, but I think that it's, you're there to learn. Yes, this is a pragmatic, this is a college, you know. Yes. yes. Like, yeah. Not about <laughs> celebrities, and also like, there's a, a logistical problem with big sizes when it comes to hands-on learning. Yes. Yesterday we had the chicken latrine. Anybody that wanted to get their hands on a chicken could. could. Actually, yeah. Yeah. That was critical. So also we organized it so that we had oftentimes a couple classes going at once, yes. and then later those classes Duplicated. would repeat. Mm -hmm. So that way you could attend each one, but you could get your you could get a small a size small. around yes. each person. And I was going to say that that's another thing because we've been to the bigger events and we've had to decide like, okay, you go over there yeah. and I'll go over here, mm -hmm. and yeah, by we'll duplicating them, yeah, you you allowed that we could we could attend both of them. That was awesome. Yes. Um, I I just want to say thank you. It's thank been you. a joy again, year two. Can't wait to see what year three mm -hmm. uh, has to say. Tell us how we can find you other than back to the land for the things you're doing yep so back to land festival.com would be for for this um, we also have our own farmers I'll, I'll give you a whole spiel of websites here. Yeah. Uh, Gabby is a marketer and designs websites so we have a lot of websites and we have a lot of businesses so um, and, and the nonprofit um, so we uh, also have our farm which is hollowtopfarms.com and we sell some of our farm products on there spigot kits for barrels things like that um, we have Tennessee homestead design that's my homestead design company and then marketing by Gabby, unsurprisingly, is the marketing by Gabby. Okay. So you guys need like three or four more things because you just aren't busy and a, enough. And a YouTube channel yeah. instead for a living. And and by the way, you'll be growing your family soon, right? Yep. So yep. 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 So, Very soon in November. Yeah. So they awesome. won't be busy at all when when they. Not yeah. Actually, that after this festival, that sounds easy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like all we have to do now is have a baby. Easy. That's it. Well, thank That'll you for be. your time. Thank it's you. been awesome again. Um, you know, as always, reach out, and I can't wait to see what you guys do next year. I'm excited to. Yeah, thank, thank you so much.
Oh, 